Well, 2018 altogether is the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Amen. That's going to be our theme. Hallelujah. The year of the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Amen. And then also we know it's the big 18, nine gifts, nine fruit of the Spirit, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we're, we're excited for that. You know, uh, as we see everything around us shifting and changing, we know one thing that our Father never shifts and changes. He's solid. He's a yes, sir. We love him. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out tonight. And, and you know, we, we believe for the heater to work in Jesus' name. And we prayed for the fan to work. You know, that loud thump that you used to hear during the service, that was that fan making that noise. So I think for some reason it's kind of a, well, it's going to work in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Uh, I know that uh, as a pastor... My, my desire in my heart is to fill you with faith, to teach you the Word of God, to instruct you, and also to, to encourage us that we're going home one day. We're going to be with the Lord one day. I want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, that's one of my, my assignments on earth is to remind us that Jesus Christ is at hand. He's coming and His Redeemer lives. One day we're going to be looking up to heaven and we're going to be seeing the heavens open up and Jesus there. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's going to be an awesome day. Until then, let's get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And tonight there's something special that I want to share with you. Also being the first the first sermon or the service of the year, hallelujah, amen, the first service of the year, hallelujah, amen, and so I just want to encourage you to, to get into the word, and let's get into the word, hallelujah, and, and let's focus on what God is saying, hallelujah, amen, let's quickly turn uh, to Proverbs, the 29th chapter, Proverbs 29, hallelujah, say it be amen. amen, hallelujah, now, the Bible declares in Proverbs 29, in fact, uh, I want you to really highlight that if you can uh, in your Bible or your electronic device, whatever you have. But notice this in verse 18. I want, when you have it, say, I have it. Proverbs 29, verse uh, 18. Every, I want everybody to hear this message tonight. Not one is out. Um, I want everybody to hear it. Hallelujah. And those that are watching online, you focus on that word. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, Amen. This is the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Um, where there is no vision, the people perish. Verses 18. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The law of the word of God. I'm telling you, when I started following and asking the Lord to help me follow the word of God, I, we became a happy person in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Because see, it, it puts us in a position we have a hope, we have a vision to see Jesus one day, a hope, hallelujah, amen. Now, other translation says where there, the Bible says where there is no vision, uh, there, there is no redemptive revelation. No redemptive revelation. Revelation comes when we have a source, a, a true desire to stay on line with the source of God, hallelujah, amen. Also, the Bible says where there is no vision, people ex do not accept divine guidance. Now notice this, do not accept divine guidance and run wild. <laughs> Say with me, I'm not going to run wild. Have you, ever seen, have you ever seen a critter run wild? Hallelujah, amen. And so this is, it's amazing that he says that. So uh, listen, there's a goal and there's a vision for us. Stay with it. 2018 is going to be another year. You stay with the things of God, get closer to God, love on God, do more for God that you couldn't do in 2017 or you didn't do, get more in the Word of God, find ways to just saturate yourself, soak yourself with the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, goals are simply vision broken down. Remember this. Goals are simply vision broken down into smaller pieces that are measurable in time and space. So in other words, we're going to break down what God has given us and just take it Chew on it, learn on it, live on it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Sunday, I'm not going to redo uh, what I did, said Sunday, but I do want to uh, uh, go quickly over some points that I mentioned. And the thing that we're going to do in 2018, number one is be more faithful and committed. Uh, I remember my pastor says, if you're faithful now, just put some more faithfulness on. And so Jesus told his disciples, he says, continue growing in me, continue growing. 
So in other words, we got to continue. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you fisher of men. Now think about it. If we've never led anybody to Jesus, that means we're, we need to keep growing in the Lord. Come on. We need to become fishers of men. And we got to we gotta know how to use bait. When I go fishing, I, I just don't use one bait. I try to find all kinds of bait to get the right kind of fish. And when I find the, what's working, man, that's it for the day. Come on. That's what it is with us. So in other words, let's be more faithful and committed. And I talked about loving the church, praying for each other more. I encourage you, please listen to what, what I'm saying for this year. Pray for one another more. Uh, find ways to put the names of every person in this church on and, and start praying for each other, praying the Holy Ghost for each other. We need each other in this day. Pray for us. Uh, and think, think about it. There's no other option. This is your life. Think about it. Our life is not our job. It's not our family. Our life is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Put in number one. Everything else will be secondary. Listen, I put Jesus first, my wife second, right? That's, that should be the plan that we have. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Uh, number two, let's grow the house of God. Uh, we, we've got to grow the house of God. Amen. Not only the house of God, the, the ministry of Jesus Christ. Let's start to find ways to evangelize, encourage people to connect to church, tell people to get involved in church. They may not live here in the city. They may live other places. Tell them, find you a place uh, to go. I told Erica this weekend, uh, she misses us so much. She says, thank you for all the gifts and, and the boxes I gave her, all the, all the goodies and, and the frozen turkey. And the, oh, we had a beautiful time at McDonald's. The Lord said, you meet at a McDonald's restaurant. I said, well, that's kind of strange father he says uh, uh you meet there and i said oh i know what you're doing it was a play zone a big play zone and we just opened gifts there and had a great time while other kids are playing god is good amen and i told her erica i know you miss us but you gotta get in church get connected i know you're watching us online but get those children in church get on sunday get every time get in there hallelujah amen so let's find ways to evangelize amen Point number three I talked about. Let's increase in our sacrificial giving of ourselves. Number one, giving of ourselves to the things of God. Amen. And I said something very simple. When you give unto the Lord yourself, you really break strongholds off your body, off your life. Amen. And the thing about that is, is this is, is not only in yourselves, but in, in, in your giftings, your, your talents. Uh, your ways of doing things. Everyone has a goal, has a talent in this house. Everyone has a measure. The Bible calls it a measure of the Spirit. You have a, you have a measure of the Spirit that the church needs. So get involved in that area. Hallelujah. Amen. Increase your giving. We talked about we have 98% of tithers in this house. And I talked about that 1%. Amen. And I say, 1%, you're needed. Everybody say, Amen. amen. And so, you know, that's really exciting when you have 98% of, of tithers and givers. You know, pastors say, how do you do that? And I say, it's just God. God does that. You teach them the word of God and they start prospering and they get involved. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. God is a, uh, will fund the funder. Say with me, the fund the funder. God will fund you that are a funder. Hallelujah. Amen. So do something. Make a decision that you're going to be a, a, a sacrificial giver unto the kingdom of God. Amen. And then the fourth one, very important, the fourth one. Remember, honor the word, honor the Lord, honor the church, honor your servants, honor the presence of God in this house. Listen, this is a building, but this room becomes the place of worship. It becomes a place where God communes with us. He talks to us. So let's honor this place. You know, during the week, it's a business and we pray for people there. I imagine they feel the presence of God when they come in here and do business. Amen. But listen to this. God gave us this place exclusive, really. I mean, just one business is probably there right now. But I think about it. You know, God is so good that he gave us this building, this, this whole building, really. So it's under the confines of the anointing, right? So let's honor what God has given us. Listen, when we honor what God gives us, he'll give us more. If you honor the word, he'll give you more word. If you honor the worship, he'll, he'll allow you to worship him more. If you, if you honor uh, one another in the ministry gifts and your pastors, listen, it'll, it'll work for you. It'll work for you. Amen. Now, there is a video that I'm going to show you. It's about 20, 15 minutes, I think, 15 minutes. Uh, it's about two pastors' uh, wives. Uh, one is uh, Pastor uh, Deborah Simon, and the other one is, is Pastor Dufresne. Uh, beautiful, beautiful women of God. One pastor, Dufresne, the, you'll see the, Nancy Dufresne, the one to your left, her husband died in a plane crash about four years ago, and he was a pastor of the church, and she took over the church about, about four years ago, uh, was it? About four years ago. And so uh, she took over the church, and, and, and you know, think about that. Uh, 
uh, she just kept on with assignment. The other pastor is, is her husband, still pastoring, but they're powerful women. Uh, they've connected with us in, in ministry, in, in spirit, and we've been just uh, learning so much for them. In fact, our spiritual father is their spiritual father. And uh, in fact, next week, uh, is it this Friday, this Sunday? Uh, 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 Brother Copeland will be at their church. And so the thing about it is, I want you to see this. This video came out, uh, to my recollection, came out, uh, I believe, right around the time that I presented you last Sunday, the message. And so it came out right after that. And so we're, uh, church, let me encourage you, we're right on line with the Spirit of God. Our compass, our spiritual compass is right set. I thank God for that. I thank God that we're not in left field, lost, and just doing our own thing. We're, we're really just focusing on God, and God is speaking to our church. He's speaking to us. We're right on there. So when I talked about honoring, this video came on, and, and I felt so strong to show it to you. So let's enjoy this video tonight, and then we'll, we'll share some more what God has. Amen. Focus on the Word. Just focus. Listen to every word, and you're going to receive the anointing of God. You're going to understand why God is calling this year the year of fire, the, whole, the year of the Holy Ghost, and fire. He's getting us ready for more in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Welcome to today's episode of the Dufresne Faith Journal. We are so glad you've joined us and my goodness, we've got something special for you today. One of my dear, 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 dear friends, Pastor Debbie Simons has joined us. Her and her husband pastor a church in Merced, California, which is more what Central California is. We it? are Central San Joaquin Valley. So if anybody knows family members or anybody in that area, send them there. And uh, again, their, their church is wonderful. They have been a precious supply to us personally, to this ministry. And I tell you, we're not willing to do without them. And so I, I nabbed her today and got her to come and join us. And so one of the things that is so prevalent in Pastor Debbie's ministry and her teaching ministry is the subject of honor. And this is what we thrive on listening to when she gets to come and talk to us. She ministers in our church. She ministers to our Bible school students on this subject. And so I said, would you please come and join me and talk about that? So I'm just going to let her have free reign, whichever direction she wants to go with the subject of honor, because it's so broad, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It covers so many areas. And there's so much that needs to be said. Yes. And But I wanted, before we get started, I wanted to read an excerpt, Pastor Debbie, out of this book, this book was written by Joel Siegel. It's called What Happened to Honor. Now, Brother Joel, uh, he was raised up under Dad Hagen's ministry. His spiritual father was our spiritual father. And he, he uh, quotes Brother Hagen. So I wanted to read a little bit of this before we get started. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you start, start ministering along these lines. Uh, he said this in quoting Dad Hagen, that Dad Hagen made the statement, When these things, reverence and honor, are restored... There will be a restoration and a multiplication of the miraculous power of God. And he says, it is with a sense of passion and even desperation that I humbly add my voice to his, calling for the restoration of a culture of honor within yes. the church. Isn't that a good phrase, a yes. culture of honor? He said this, and this is Brother Joel, uh, of course, writing now. And he says, the move of God and the plan of God require the honor of God. The problem in our day is a lack of honor that is eroding the effectiveness of the church and limiting the power of God. People don't realize that, do they? No, they do not. And, and it's critical to learn it. Perhaps an even bigger problem is that the whole process seems to be going unnoticed yes. by many ministers and leaders that yes. they don't realize this yes. is a missing component. What I've seen the church literally throw in the trash in the recent years scares me. Things that should have been hallowed forever are being called old and obsolete. People who think that they're doing the body of Christ a great service are encouraging leaders to leave behind the old and embrace the new. The result is that a church that is powerless, faithless, 
and honorless. And so when he says these, these are just launching pads for some of the things that God has given you to say and teach to the body of Christ. Uh, years ago, the Spirit of God began to deal with me with honor as a baby Christian. Uh -huh. And God was really helping me stay on track and stay on course. Mm -hmm. And what he, what he said to me, if the first thing about honor is, how do you entreat the gifts that I have put in your life, which is the fivefold ministry? Uh -huh. And the Bible calls them gifts. Right. And so he said to me, how do you treat a gift that has been given to you from someone that means something to you? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I began to meditate on that. And I thought, well, you know, you treat it with regard. There's a certain way you treat something that's precious to you. And that's what God began to talk to me about the local church, your pastor, the fivefold ministry. Treat all of this with your reverence and respect and esteeming it. And, and, and first and foremost, the Word. Sure. Put a value on the Word of God. And recognize that Word is God speaking to us. Speaking to us. And which means that if God is speaking to me and I regard that, I esteem that, then I can't ignore it. Right. I cannot put it, uh, uh, eliminate it from the equation of my life. It, what I do, what I say, how I think, how I live. And so he began to lead me. And as a baby Christian, he began to tell me to esteem the place that he planted me, the local church. Yeah. Put a value on that. Mm -hmm. It was a rescue to me. The word of God was preached. The spirit of God was allowed to move and my life was changed. Okay, now let me interrupt and ask you, when you say esteeming the local church, what does that involve In, to you and to, me, to the word? To esteem the local church is to become a part of it. Uh -huh. Be a supply, be there and to believe that God is moving in every service so that you can extract what you need from it. You go expecting. I go expecting. So can we say this, that to come to a church and not, to a church service and not even really expecting, just gonna go and just kind of be present. Right. But not drawing on anything. Is that play into the role of honor? Yes, it does. You are dishonoring. Uh, I was raised in a religion. And in the religion, we had a phrase that was called holy days of obligation, right. which means that we had to attend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come to church like fulfilling an obligation uh -huh. and they don't come expecting the power of God to move for their lives every time that they're there and they don't train their family to expect. Right. Yeah. And so really what God said to me was, you know, Honor your local church and what's happening there by supporting it. Right. Immediately, I was probably only uh, saved maybe a little over a year. But when I got to the church that I knew God had planted me in, he said, now you are receiving spiritual food. Now you do your part by bringing the natural. Right. We have been taught so much more about this now. Mm -hmm. But in my day, when I first got saved, you know, I was not under the teaching that I'm under now. Yeah, you weren't hearing this talk. So God was it. having to really teach you so that you could go further. So that I could go further. And really what he said, uh, your pastor, the word of God, the moving of the spirit is bringing a spiritual supply to you. You bring a natural supply. Right. And I understood that. Be there, bring my ties. Uh, be a part of everything that the pastor is doing. If he starts a project, then you find a way to help fund it. Yeah. If he, they need anybody there, you know, you're there. Right. Why? Because I put a value on what was going on in my local church. I put a value that my pastor had a vision and that vision was from God. Yeah. And because I honored God, I honored the vision. I honored what he said God was telling us to do. So we taught our family that when the doors of the church are open, we will be there no matter what. That's and I heard you talk about in your church, you made this statement, you said many believers try to fit church services into their schedule. And you made the statement, I fit the rest of my day into the schedule of my church services. Exactly. And this is where people say, well, I don't have time. If it's first, you have time for it. Exactly. And if you really believe that something is happening for you in every service, there wouldn't be an option of whether I go or not. Right. And this is what's lacking today. People are really trying to fit God in their schedule. Right. They think it's just church. Right. No, you're exactly right. They think it's just church but they're really just trying to fit God in their schedule. When I got born again, God was everything. 
and he stayed everything. Because your life needed oh, <laughs> rescuing God. so much when you talk about what God brought you out of. Yes. You, it wasn't optional. No, when you live a life of rebellion and you know, you're full of sin, it ends in a dead, uh, you know, a dead end road. It, it doesn't end good. Mm, right. And I cried out to God in a time of desperation. And when God met me there and began to, uh, met, you know, really lead me into the path that he had for me, uh, church wasn't an option for me. Mm -hmm. I needed it to keep depression off of me. I yeah. ke needed it yeah. to keep hope in my life. I needed the to local keep from church. going back where exactly. you came out of. Exactly. And people, I don't understand that. I don't understand when the Spirit of God comes in to dwell in you that it isn't your all in all. Yeah. And it was necessary. And you have to keep that honor for the local church and for what God does for your life through the local church. Yes, you stirred do. up. You have to, you know, Pastor Debbie, people will say, I, I think they're going too far with you know, be at everything, that the that be a part of everything the pastor's doing. But if their job Require oh, yes. that oh, yes. they don't get up and decide. Well, I'm going to dismiss going to work today because I'm tired. They don't do that toward that, no, or towards the kids' schooling or something like that. But when church, it becomes almost an optional. Like I'm a volunteer going to church. Most of the time, people will throw their whole lives in a career, mm -hmm. and they will risk losing their family over it. Yeah. Yeah. But people think that it's odd to throw your whole life into the will of God which you're not going to lose your family over. I've had people say to me, y'all go to church all the time. And I say back, y'all go to ball games yes. all the time. Yes. So you're somewhere all, all the, the time. time. I remember Grant when he was, oh, he was about 13 or 14 because my boys were homeschooled. That's how God dealt with us. I, had a, I did have a teacher that helped me with that. So I didn't have to do that always all by myself. But at, Grant hit about 14 or so. And he started saying these words. I get tired of coming to the church, you know, because I would go to church and he would do, he'd go to church and do school there. And he said, I have to go to church all, every day. I have to go to church. So what he was saying, he says, I want to go to a public school. And that's fine if that's where God has you to put yeah. yours. But I know how he led us. And so I said, D don't even start with me because if you were in a public school, you would be there every day. So don't treat it like because there's repetition and routine that it now becomes a negative. And that's the way people treat the local church, that it, the routine of it can be easily broken, but it's dangerous to do that. That really is one of the most dangerous things that we have to deal with, especially my husband and I in pastoring. The routine to them becomes monotonous, and then they fail to see the value of what they're doing. They fail to see the value that we're a part of something bigger. God is the one that gives a vision. He gives a man a plan. And then he brings people alongside of him to help him fulfill that plan. And it's our job to stay stirred up and think if this is what God has for me to do, then it's important. And I can't let it be, a, be minimized in my mind, in my emotions, in my actions, in my thoughts. You know, you gotta talk to yourself. You gotta stir yourself. You gotta stir yourself up and tell yourself, no, this is the will of God and I will not allow myself to lessen its value in my life. Well, Pastor Debbie, I've seen that when people don't keep themselves stirred about the honor of being part of a local church, those are the same ones that stop stirring their proper honor toward their spouse, yes. toward their marriage, toward their job, and then everything starts derailing. If you, if you let go of the, the spiritual things that are to be honored, the natural things are soon to follow. They uh, always, yeah. always. Yeah. And we've seen it many times. People, they get caught up in their other activities mm -hmm. and they don't see how that's going to affect their family. Yeah. They start missing church for this activity or that activity and they still feel they're okay. Yeah. But what they're saying is, I don't believe that there's something more important going on in church mm -hmm. than in this other activity that I have. And we've seen it in over 20 some years. This happens to people and then their marriages start to be strained. Their children, you know, are begin to be scattered. And then after a while, their lives are completely unraveled. And many times they don't connect the dots. It's because how did I treat what God deemed important in my life? My pastor, my local church, uh, all of that. 
they stop regarding it. And so they let something else take its place of importance and then they end up losing everything. And people need to be reminded, God sent his son so his son could have a family and he could have a family and there could be the body of Christ. The most important thing to God is the body of Christ. He loves the world. Yes. He's done all he, all he can do for the world in the sense that he sent Jesus. He can't do anything more for yeah. them, but he's still working with the, the body. Church. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Church. yeah. And people need to understand the honor of that. And like you said, sometimes there's a passage of time in the sense of if someone quits being faithful to their local church. It might be six months or nine months before things start obviously derailing. So the devil doesn't want them to make that connect. And so don't let the passage of time make them think that that was a, a, an action that didn't have a repercussion. Right, and it does, it does. It has a repercussion. Every time that you stop valuing what God's word says is important in your life, then there's going to be some sort of consequence down the road. And it won't just affect you. No. It'll affect your family. No, exactly. And uh, you know, in pastoring 25 years, I've seen it over and over. How long have y'all been pastoring? We have been pastoring probably somewhere close to 25, I think. Yeah. I think it was 19. So you've seen how these things play out. And, and we say this to people because sometimes this is a missing link for people. And uh, people think if I, you know, if I'm, if I'm born again, and if I have a church that I go to periodically, I'm safe. But it, 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 take, it, it takes what we're talking about, the honor and how you regard it. And you know, I've noticed that the people that keep themselves stirred up, mm -hmm. that put God first, put the local church first, their position in the local church, wherever department they're serving in, when they give that first place, I've seen storms come to their lives but I've seen God do many miracles for them. The outcome's different. The outcome is different yeah. every time. It doesn't have the intended outcome that the devil wanted. No, the storms come, but it doesn't knock that house down. I tell you what, Pastor Debbie, there's so much that needs to be said. We're going to be saying some more of these things in the next episodes. They don't want to miss it, do they? No, not oh, at all. Oh, my, my, my. We're having too good a time. Listen, thank you so much for joining us, and we're so glad to have you with us, and we look forward to next time. God bless you. Give the Lord a praise. Isn't show. that good? Hallelujah. Uh, you know, the timing is impeccable. Uh, that tells us that the Lord is speaking. Uh, we talked Sunday about the honor of the church, the, the vision of the house, the things that we need to do for 2018. And when this video came out, so impeccable, the, the beauty of it. And so let's look at something. Go with me to Luke. And uh, I want you to see something. We're going to remember this is the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. Remember, fire purifies. Uh, and we have to allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to purify us. You know, uh, let's say we're all in the country riding horses and uh, I build a big old campfire and I say, come on guys, get over here and warm yourselves up. Let's have some hot cocoa and let's just have a good time around the campfire. Like weather like this, what do you do around that campfire? You just allow that campfire to warm you, right? And so uh, I'm not going to let that fire die because I'm going to keep the fire going to keep us warm. But notice this, you're not going to back away from that fire unless you really want to freeze. You're not going to move away from that fire. Your choice is to stay with it. It would be ridiculous for you to walk away from that campfire and say, I like it out there where it's cold. No, I don't think no one likes it. This is what we find in Luke, the third chapter. And let's find out what Jesus said. Now remember, this is the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. So 2018, it's going to be the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. We're going to be on fire for God. We're going to be ready, prepared, uh, going into the new year with uh, going into this new year with tremendous power. Luke, the third chapter, verses 16. The Bible says, John answered. Are you there, everybody? Hallelujah. John, the third chapter, verses 16. The Bible says, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I come, cometh the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to unleash. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Notice what it says, Holy Ghost and with fire. See, it takes the Holy Ghost and the fire 
to get us where we're going to supposed to be. Notice what it says in verse 17. Whose fan is in his hand, the fan that stirs the embers, that stirs the fire, it's in the hand of Jesus. He will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat in his garner, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. So in other words, it shows you the removal of grain from shaft. Removal from grain from shaft, removal from heart, the, 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 the wheat grain from the, from the shaft. Listen, the wheat grain is what he wants. He wants that wheat grain. It's the shaft that he's going to burn. So what does that tell me? There's things in our life that God is going to start burning. Remember, there's things that you know, there's things that I have, that you have, that God is going to start burning. All those things that he deems them literally uh, uh, that, in other words, he deems them that they are against what he wants. In other words, listen, uh, when, 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 let's say you, you get a white shirt. I know I like to wear white shirts with ties and, and tie in. And, and whenever I put a shirt in the clean or in the laundry mat, pull it out, I'm not going to wear it until it's all wrinkled. Come on, church. It would be, it would be ridiculous for me to wear a shirt all wrinkled. What do I do? I get the, the, the iron out, the iron board. What do I do? I get that iron hot. What do I do? I'm ironing all the wrinkles out. Come on, church. I'm buying all the wrinkles off the collar, the, the sleeves, and it's looking nice. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what God is going to do for us in 2018. He's getting the iron out. He's getting rid of all those wrinkles that we, we have. <laughs> Not natural wrinkles, but wrinkles, those unseen wrinkles. And he's going to remove them to get us prepared for the day that he comes. So in other words, uh, he, listen, he's preparing us as a bride. Amen. Like you had to get prepared for the day. He's preparing us as a bride, a bride, a bride. The groom is coming. Hallelujah. Say, I mean, the groom is coming. We're going to a wedding. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and so it's going to be an awesome thing. So I believe uh, as the Lord put that in our heart, this is the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. And I talked about those four things at points that we're going to stay with. And the last one was honor, honor, honor. This is what the Holy Ghost is doing, is letting us get ready for more glory of God. The more that we honor Him, the more. Church no longer becomes secondary. Come on, church. Church becomes number one in our life. The things of God become number one. And, and you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do everything our can to, everything that we can to allow God to help us understand that number one is the house of God. This is our life. Say with me, this is our life. Come on, church. Say with me, this is our life. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the house of God is our life. This is our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything around there uh, is, uh, is, is circle, circles around the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And listen, we're going to believe God for great things to happen. Say with me, amen. amen. And so as we said earlier, we're going to honor the things of God every service. We're going to pull from the word. We're going to pull the anointing. We're going to honor the giftings. We're going to get, listen, I even talked about getting in the house of God early. Listen, I'm going to say it again. Say it with me, get in the house of God early. Listen, we need to really focus on, and let me stay on here for a moment. Amen. I'm going to have to stay here for a moment. Say with me, I love my pastor. Go with it, pastor. Go to it. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this, notice this, notice this. When I went to Washington, D.C., uh, they, I was invited to the White House, no, excuse me, to the Capitol, not the White House, the Capitol. And so I was going to meet with President Bush and many leaders there. there we had a, there was a few uh, representatives, ministerials, and I was one that went out of maybe 25 pastors. And I had an honor. It was an honor to fly down there. They, um, uh, I was flown out there. I was picked up in a limousine, taken to the hotel, and went to the White House. But the thing about it was we were all there early waiting for the president. We were there early, earlier than normal, early, 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 early. And the honor that we gave the president and his staff when they walked in, everybody stood. And, and it was such, I, I, I never saw honor like that. And the Lord spoke to me that very moment. I said, Lord, I, I told the Lord, Lord, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here. And I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me so clear. He says, but what about my house? And I literally just melted there. I said, oh, God. And I came back and I realized the body of Christ is not honoring the Lord. We're, we're, we're not going, going to, we're not going to, listen, how many of you go to work late? Raise your hand. You go to work late? Please work on that before you get fired. Don't, don't do that. It's a character issue. We have to realize we can't go to work late. 
Listen, we can't go to anything late. And let me encourage you, don't go to the house of God late. I told a couple years ago, this couple needed a miracle. And, and the Lord spoke to me. I remember praying for this couple and saying, Lord, how do I minister this couple? And the Lord says, tell them that as they're late, I will be late with them. And so I went to them. I says, you know what? You, you need a miracle. But the Lord says, until you put him first and you, you're early to the things of God, he'll put, you, he'll put you first, right? And so I told them and they started going to church early, early, early. They were early, early. And the miracle happened. The miracle happened. Little did I know the miracle was with their child. And, and see, see how God works? God works in these things. So let's put God first. Let's find ways. And listen, say with me, I love my pastor. But this is the thing that we need to do. We need to work on these, these character issues, uh, flaws that we have in life. Uh, we need to realize that God wants us to be sharp in the things of God, sharp in the things so, so we represent Him out there. Our jobs will be res- represented well. You be the best worker out there. You get the best raises. You'll get the best thing. Come on, church. But also in the things of God. Say with me, in the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands now and say, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus that we love you father we honor your presence god hallelujah we honor you father we thank you jesus we thank you in the name of jesus hallelujah amen father i thank you in the name of jesus i thank you father lord 2018 is definitely a year for us to polish For us to be stronger in you, Father. To be uh, declared wise in you, Father, Lord Jesus. Not like the world, but Lord, like you and the word, Father. And so, Father, we thank you for this video. We thank you for these pastors that have spoken to our hearts, Lord. We bless them in Jesus' name. And, Father, I understand, Lord. I, I, I understand, Lord, what you're saying to this house. Lord, as a pastor to this house, I know, Father, my job uh, may not be something that uh, that, that uh, people esteem, but Lord, as a representative of heaven, a representative of the, king, the kingdom of God, I speak your word and I declare the Holy Spirit's words and I speak into a people that will honor you. And Lord, we will be so faithful in everything, Lord. We will honor you all the days of our life. Lord, I thank you that you're allowing us to equip ourselves and be ready, prepared, be mature in the things of God. Father, I thank you that we will grow in you, Father, in the knowledge of who you are. And Father, we thank you, Jesus, because we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going to heaven in the name of Jesus. We're going to heaven in the name of Jesus. We're going to heaven, and Lord, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let's stand up tonight, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, God is good. good. And notice this, He is a good God. He's a very good God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's represent the Lord well this year. Let's represent the Lord well. You know, the Bible says in Ezekiel, He who honors me, I will honor. Now think about that. The Lord said that through Ezekiel. Also, the Bible says, honor begins in our life to the things of God. Now think about that. Honor begins in our hearts. And and think about that. The heart of man was without God. I'm talking about the you that are saved. We were without God, but now we have God in our heart. That means that He now in us is causing us to change, to become more like you. Listen, I remember the way I was before Jesus, and boy, I didn't like it. Nobody liked it. But I'll tell you what, when I came to Jesus, he changed everything about me. Everything. And that's what he's doing. He's changing all us. All us. Listen, we're born into this world. You know, uh, Sunday, uh, New Year's, uh, excuse me, New Year's Day, uh, we had a grandbaby come to this world. Beautiful grandbaby. And, and I remember praying for her. Say, oh, Father, I thank you for she comes from heaven, heaven, heaven. But you know what? Even though she's coming to heaven, she's born into this earth, into this sinful earth. There will come a day that she'll need to call Jesus and say, Jesus, please forgive me my sins. Think about that. We're, because we're all born into sin. And notice this. That means this little child will grow to become more like Jesus. And she'll know what's right and wrong. And she'll give her life to Jesus. But you know what? She will have to learn the word of God. She would have to connect in a house of God, grow in the church, learn the word, just like you and me. That means there's a shame, change taking place. Think about it. We're all born into a corrupt world. And that means throughout our life, God is changing us. 
He's fixing us. He's making us more purified. And so there's going to be things that he's going to work on you. Don't fight God. Don't get, don't fight the change. Allow God to change you. Allow the word to change you. Allow the message to change you. Listen, when I said, I love, say, say with me all together. I love my pastor. Remember when I said that? There's, there's things that sometimes uh, you may not like that I say, but it's the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and I remember my pastor had to say many things and I would say, whoa, he's speaking to me. But he was not speaking to me. You know what? God was speaking to me. Hallelujah. Amen. It wasn't, it wasn't my pastor trying to get into my business. It was the Holy Spirit already knew my business. You see what I'm saying? And we have to realize how important these things are. Listen, the more that we get closer to the coming of the Lord, the more change is required. Say with me, change is required. Change is good. Say with me, change is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Change is good. And so let's learn to focus on this. You know, today um, I was uh, preparing for tonight and, and just could, couldn't wait to be here in the house of God. And we were coming and as we were getting off the truck and, and, and I got to see through here and I got to see Damalo and I got to see Lenise and, and I got to see, you know, then all of a sudden people started coming I started saying, Lord, I thank you, Lord. It's this is your doing. This is your doing. It's your doing, Lord. It's your doing. Think about that. All of us tonight, we've come because it's his doing. Listen, uh, I made a choice to be in the house of God. But I guarantee you before in my early days, uh, you know, I would have to think, should I go to church or not tonight? And, and I remember those days. Should I go to church? Or not? It was ridiculous. I mean, I would think. Why, sh why would I make a choice like that when, when the house of God is my life? Although at that moment, I didn't know it was my life. But I'm telling you, think about it. I want you to think about this right now. God is our life. Worshiping him is our life. And we only get two times a week together. I mean, I really miss all of you on Monday. I miss y'all Tuesdays. But I know Wednesday's coming. Say with me, Wednesday's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. And I can't wait to see the body of Christ. And then Sunday's coming. Tell me Sunday's coming. Sunday. Amen. And, and so that's our life. And I think about that. Lord, I thank you for everyone that we've come. We didn't have to choose to be here. We came because it's life. If you have to choose to be at church and choose to something else, and I think you really have to focus on, on what is important to you. Is life important to you? Is the things of heaven important to you? You know, I know, I know, I, I, I told you Sunday, I thank God that I have a beautiful home, a be beautiful cars, beautiful furniture. I have, a be I have beautiful things, you know, but that has nothing to do with life. What is life is that I'm serving you. The Lord healed my wife of cancer. That literally kills people. The Lord healed her. You know, yeah, we were hit with a storm. We were hit with a storm, but God delivered us from the storm. And it was in the house of God that we had you pray for us, encourage us, lift us up. And God healed her. Look at her today, healed and delivered and, and doing well. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, you know, now now we're moving into 2018. But think about it. If we were without God. What would we be doing today? If I was without God and Christine got struck with this, what would we be doing? I, I'd probably be she'd probably go into stage three, stage four. And then, you know, unto death. But the thing about that is, oh, God, I thank God that you're my life, Father. You're my life. Nothing else matters but you, God. You know, and, and think about that. That's our life. The worship of God is our life. The day will come that we'll be in heaven. You're going to give each other high fives and say, you know what, Pastor? Thank you for encouraging me to be in the house. Thank you for teaching us the word because I'm here in heaven. See, that's his, this is my assignment. My assignment here is to bring you the word of God. Bring you the word of God so that you can grow in faith, grow in his knowledge, ultimately to go to heaven. That's my assignment. Honor that beautiful assignment. Honor the time that we come together. Think about it. What if Jesus was to come within the next second? And we're out of here and we're in church. Think about it. What if we were really just sleeping in bed tonight watching Gunsmoke. <laughs> I like Gunsmoke, amen. Watching cowboys, uh, you know, and stayed in bed, you know, uh, you know, and then Jesus comes, you know, I, I think I'd, I, I don't want, I, I'm not going to miss, I'm not going to miss heaven for Gunsmoke, amen. 
You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying that because I enjoy Westerns, but I know how to balance myself when it comes to watching television. But I want to encourage you. Let's get ready for 2018. Now, this Sunday, we're going to talk about fasting. We're going to go into a fast. We're going to learn fasting. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to uh, submit, uh, tell our flesh, flesh, you've enjoyed all the food for Christmas and Thanksgiving and, and New Year's. Now you're going to fast. We're going to learn how to fast. We're not going to do, we're not going to do uh, abrupt fasting. We're going to learn how to take one step at a time because I want us to, to tell our body. The other day, um, Pastor Christine said, you know, I made, I made some really great Mexican soup. Oh, my God. I made a big old pot. And uh, Christine says, why don't you go get a third? Why don't you go get a third? Well, the reason why I invite anybody over, I put too much pepper in it. And it was burning hot. <sighs> it was fire. And so uh, I, I didn't want to throw it away. So I tried to find ways to dilute it. And was it all right the second set? <laughs> it was t- I invited my daughter. She loves that Mexico. She was like, woo, dad. <laughs> Amen. This is a year of Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Christine said, why don't you go get you your third bowl? And I says, no, my body is not going to have a third bowl. Because the third bowl, I want it, but I'm telling my body, you're not going to have it. And my body cried. Past the pumpkin pie, it cried. Past the orange juice, it cried. Past the grapes, it cried. Oh, I went to the water. I said, you're going to drink nothing but water right now, body. It cried, it cried. Coming down here, Christine says, we're hungry. Well, no water burger today. (laughs) No water burger. Amen. Why? Because see, the body's been speaking too much. And so Sunday, we're going to talk about fasting. Then we're going to go, the church is going to go into a week of fast. We're going to go into a week of fast. No, we're not doing it to lose weight, <laughs> although you will lose weight. We're not doing it to, to get our, 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 our figure back. No, although you will. But we're going to fast too, so that we can tell our flesh, flesh, you're going to hear the word of God even more. There's things that our flesh wants to do. Come on, church. Amen. And we have to take control of our flesh. Can you know, you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Everybody knows what I'm talking about? Flesh, flesh is deadly. Flesh wants to do things. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have to be careful. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you as we enter in more into this year. Uh, Lord, we want to be prepared even more. We want to be sensitive in the spirit. And Lord, teach us more your word. Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come tonight. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the power and the ability to learn from you tonight. And we give you praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.